All right, guys, it's cold outside. It's winter time. Where am I going to start with lures? I'm gonna give you your top two lures to start with right here in the winter time. Now, I'm not talking about way deep south where it's still warm, like Florida. Like that's that's not that's not winter time. That's summer in the deep south. That's what that is. I'm talking about the middle part of the country, Tennessee, Virginia, uh, the Carolinas, even Georgia, most of Georgia, uh, up to you know Pennsylvania, a lot of those areas that still are not frozen over. The first two lures I'm gonna start with, when I'm going bass fishing, I've got them for you right here. Number one, number one is going to be a regular jig. Now this is a, a missile baits mini flip right here. It's a little bit smaller profile, hands down my number one winter time bait right there it's got a little um, mini d chunk on the back something smaller and compact you can see it's not a huge huge jig a huge profile this is a half ounce i'm going to be able to work this bait all the way out to 20 25 feet of water and catch a bunch of fish and and the reason i like a jig is probably number one is because it it catches big ones in the winter time yeah you know, winter time in general you're gonna catch a larger average size fish for whatever reason. When that water gets cold, you don't catch a lot of like 12 and 13 inchers. I have no idea where those fish go in, in the winter time. I think they go out there and they suspend and they do, they do weird stuff. They don't act like regular other bass. The bigger bass still stay on structure, on cover. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna you know, with the, with the jig, we're gonna target rock, rocky points, uh, rocky bluff, bluff type, bluff type points, um, channel swing transition banks, you know, where you might have a, a bank that's like this, you know, this angle, and then in one section for about 50 or 100 yards, it might steepen up like this, and then it's going to flatten back out. That, there's a channel swing that comes near that bank, the bank, whether you can see it or not, that is going to be a really good area to throw that jig. Uh, you're gonna start before, while it's here, as it transitions to deep, and then once it comes back, you're just gonna throw that jig. Uh, either you can for, throw it at a 45 degree angle to the bank, or you can just throw it to the bank and slowly work it off, trying to keep contact with the bottom. Now, whether when we're talking about rocky points and rocky, uh, um, you know, rocky shorelines, things like that, you're gonna want to try to just maintain bottom contact with that rock. Bump, 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 bump. Keep coming over, bump, bump, like that. Um, that's that's probably gonna be my number one lure. That's how you're gonna fish it. Uh, black blue, that's the bruiser right there, is if the water's got a little bit of stain to it, I'm probably just gonna keep this in my hand a lot. Uh, the other colors I may throw would be uh, green pumpkin or bammer crawl, which is, has, has some orange in it. Winter time, baits with some orange can be a deal it definitely can be in the fall pre-spawn and the winter can definitely be a deal if you have a, a jig that has some orange in it or your trailer has a lot of orange in it so if you if you have a green pumpkin jig and you say man i don't have anything with orange in it take your trailer uh dip it in orange or find you an orange trailer uh, use a hammer craw mini d chunk stick that on the back of there and and you'll be good to go and so with that bait i'm gonna probably fish it on on bait casting equipment more more often this is a um, Cash and Icons worming rod, perfect for this kind of technique. It's 7.2. Anything in that seven foot range to 7.3, 7.4, maybe even, is gonna be fine. You don't wanna have a rod that is just a little too stiff. You don't want anything too stiff. I like fluorocarbon this time of year, 14 or 16 pound Sunline shooters. What, uh, what I'm gonna prefer, you want something in that size range. You don't wanna go too, uh, too small and you don't wanna go too big. You wanna have that jig to be able to still have some action you know i'm just i'm talking about the half ounce that's probably what i prefer fishing a little bit uh deeper uh but that three eighths and that slower fall a little bit more subtle i have seen times when that is is preferred and, and they want that as well so keep the three eighths handy don't just totally lock into the half ounce uh kind of bounce back and forth between those two sizes stay around the rock stay around the transition banks and uh, you'll probably catch plenty of fish. But let's say you're not having success 
on that rock like you thought you should. You fished a bunch of different types. You uh, fished a bunch of different depth ranges. You fished all the way out to 20 or 25 feet. Uh, you hit a lot of rock. You've only caught one or two, maybe not having the day you think you should have. If you are seeing a lot of bait fish, let me just tell you right now, grab this box. It's a jerk bait box. That's right. Grab your jerk baits because if you see it, you're seeing a lot of bait fish on your graph or you're seeing a lot of bait fish in the area, you may not see them on the surface because it's winter time. It's going to be colder. We're going to see that bait fish when we're either idling or when we're uh, stopped in fishing. If you don't have live scope or anything fancy like I do on this boat, uh, you can still see plenty of bait fish on just regular 2D sonar. You, you don't have to have uh, and you're, you're not like targeting the bait fish. That's not what I'm talking about here. You just have to have bait fish presence in, in that area. If you look down, you see, you know, big clouds of, of something on your depth finder. That's probably bait fish. And that probably means you need to pick up a jerk bait. And if it's cold and it's winter time, I will put the Spro stick up against any jerk bait on the market right now. I've got some different, you know, brand jerk baits in here, but when it's really cold, I'm telling you, I have seen it again and again. The Spro McStick 110, that's the uh, McIU color. I really like that color. Uh, overall, I like it for smallmouth. I like it for um, just in general. Uh, that that's probably one of my favorite colors. And in the winter time, I like the uh, natural herring. It's just more of an opaque. I think it looks more like a winter time shad. That is the natural herring. That's probably that'll probably be the one I'd start with in the winter time. Love that. Love that guy. Love that kind of purple gray back. Just looks like a cold water shad would look. And uh, and then this would be you know something I would mix in, especially if I've got a lake that's got smallmouth in it. I would start there. Um, I'm going to be fishing that on a Cashin Icon. I use a 7-foot. You can use a 6-9 or 7-foot. Uh, this is the extra fast, medium heavy. It is the uh, their topwater and jerkbait rod. Bam! Topwater jerkbait. Uh, I start with 12-pound Sunline Sniper. You can use 12 or 14. I used to use a lot of eight and 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon when I was throwing a jerk bait. The more I started talking with uh, Mike McClellan, who is probably caught, he has won more tournaments than anybody that, that I know of on a jerk bait. Dude, dude is definitely, definitely um, very, very good with a jerk bait. And, and he just, he says 12 and 14, period. That's it. If he wants to get the bait deeper, he'll either alter the bait or he'll go to a deeper diving model. And, and that's what I'm gonna talk about here next. Uh, you know, like I said, that's that McIU or the Mc, uh, McStick 110, that's probably my number one choice in the cold water. If I wanna get that bait a little bit deeper, I can either upsize the hooks so that the McStick comes with four, number four, uh, excuse me, number five round bend trebles. I'll replace these front two with fours and that bait will slowly sink when I do that. And I could kind of almost count that bait down to get a little bit deeper um, when I'm out there jerk bait fishing. And uh, one, you know, one of the other really popular baits is a, you know, Mega Bass Vision 110 plus one. I still have that on. Uh, I was uh, targeting some fish here a week or two ago. I was throwing a jerk bait. I cycled through the mixed stick and didn't catch anything. I wanted to get a little bit deeper, so I put on the uh, Vision 110 uh, Plus One. I didn't catch anything on this either. Uh, they were just not uh, not on that jerk bait uh, bite those two days. But that's why I went straight to it. If I see bait fish in the area, I'm gonna I'm gonna be throwing uh, this right here. And so there's two there's two different schools of thought there. Either you target the bait fish and throw the jerk bait in and around and through the bait fish, which may not be on cover, or you throw that jerk bait around the cover and draw those fish off of the cover to come in. Bam! Smack that jerk bait. 
Uh, bluff walls are really good for a jerk bait in the wintertime. Rocky points are also very good. Those transition banks that I talked about with the jig, if you go down one of those banks with a jig and you catch one or two, I'd turn around and come right back through that same bank with a jerk bait, 40, throwing it at a 45 degree angle to those banks, uh, throwing that jerk bait and seeing if any fish are, are looking upwards to, to bite more of the, the you know, dying shad that time of year. Uh, that's what I would be doing. So those are, those are hands down my top two baits for the winter time. Start with those two, you kind of go off from there. There are a bunch of good winter time baits. I'm not saying that there are not, there are a bunch of good ones, but if you want to start in the winter time, I don't care if you're going to Smith Mountain Lake or you're going to Dale Hollow or you're going to Kentucky Lake, you start with that jerk bait and, and the jig, start with those two baits and you'll have plenty of success and then you can kind of expand from there if you want to start throwing some crankbaits like a rock crawler uh, you want to expand and start throwing uh, you know little bucktails or uh, little small sw finesse swim baits can be killer in the winter time uh, but that's not where i'm going to start i'm going to start with those two i'm going to start with a jig and that jerk bait and uh, maybe we'll do follow-up uh, if the jig and the jerk bait don't work uh, what am I going to go to next? Uh, kind of give you some of those, but go out there, put those two in your hand and commit to them. I promise you, you'll have success in the wintertime when it's out there. It's cold. Stay warm, stay bundled up and go out there and have fun and catch a bunch of fish with those two baits.